So it's been a few months since we reviewed the EcoFlow Delta Pro and I wanna do a long-term review. Some of the things I like about it and some of the things I dislike about it. Also, we're gonna discuss the mounting configuration of these systems if you wanna use it for a scalable system. The cable management of these units is pretty bad in my opinion. And so we're gonna also discuss that as well. So to get started, let's cover the good things that I like about these units. First, compared to previous solar generators, these are really good. Just the quality, the power capability, um, the features and the scalability are incredible compared to what we had a couple years ago. And this includes other EcoFlow Delta models. They really listened to everybody and gave us what we wanted, including lithium iron phosphate, um, still the capability to fast charge but change the rate, and a larger MPPT, especially compared to companies like Jackery. So these are like the cream of the crop in my opinion. They are very powerful. And the EcoFlow Delta Pro compared to other models today have had very little issues. I've had people complain about the Blue Eddies with their software, with the shunt calibration and their temperature sensor issues and warnings. But with this one, I haven't had any problems. It just runs. You hook it up, there's no thinking involved. You connect the cables and it just works. Next, you can add a lot of solar to this unit. It's an actual solar power system. Most of the ones before were pretty much like toys. For example, the Jackery, how much solar that you can connect and how you have to use their plugs and adapters. Um, I don't take that unit seriously. This thing, you could actually power a cabin and have the same amount of power as like a comparable DIY system, which is very nice and never has been done before. So overall, they work and I do like them, but let's talk about the things I dislike because there's a lot more that can be said. First, this double voltage hub you cannot charge electric vehicles with, and that makes me pretty angry. Next, these cables are very short, so when you have the main units on the ground next to each other, and you have to plug in all the way over here, it just looks very awful. I wish you could plug these into the front or some other configuration, or in the back, that would be even better. Next downside is you cannot stack them like the Blue Eddy. If these could stack and also plug into each other without these ugly cables, and you would have a really good looking system. System. Now that leads me to my next downside is about the airflow of this main unit. This has the inverter and the solar charge controller and it has fans on the sides which makes it very difficult to put these expansion batteries close to it because if these are too close you're going to have over temperature if you're blocking the airflow vents. So what you need to do is you have to push these batteries to the side so that this main unit has a lot of airflow and that takes up even more space. It would be so much better if they could stack it instead. Now the next downside is a huge issue in my opinion in what separates a solar generator from a DIY solar power system. So first, with these units, when the battery gets too low, it will turn off the inverter and it will disconnect the loads. And that's good. But when solar is there and it recharges back up to 100%, it does not turn itself back on again. With all other DIY inverters and all-in-one units, you can program those so that it will turn on once it gets solar. So if you wanna leave this system for months at a time to run loads, you can. When this thing shuts down and when any other solar generator shuts down, you have to go back and turn it on manually. And I don't think that that's acceptable. And they could add this feature to the firmware so easily. You could program it to turn on the inverter once it reaches a certain state of charge, whether it's 20 or 80 or 100%. It would be so easy to add that feature. And because of this major limitation, it really dictates how I use these units in my shop. In this configuration, I'm using these as a supplemental uninterruptible power supply. So in this configuration, these batteries charge these all day long, and this unit is charged with 1200 watts of solar and then it runs my mini split air conditioner. So when these batteries shut down because I'm using them to charge my Tesla, these batteries will take over and continue to power my air conditioner. Usually these batteries will charge up again fast enough and turn on the inverter autonomously to actually charge these up so that these never reach 0% state of charge. But if these batteries get fully discharged and this isn't here to charge it back up again, these have to be manually turned on. It would be so so nice if this could just charge up with solar, turn itself back on again, and then run the loads autonomously, but it cannot do that simple task. Now let's talk about mounting configuration. So as you guys know, you need airflow on the sides of this main unit, and that is very crucial. 
But if you want to use the double voltage hub, you're going to have to connect two of these together. And that can be nearly impossible if you want to add two expansion batteries to a single unit. Because how are you going to connect this to another one if you have the expansion batteries on both sides of this one? So I found that this rack is the best solution for it. So if on this second shelf, you put a main unit and two expansion batteries up here, you can actually connect the two main units like this. That way you can max out the expansion capabilities of each unit and you can have the double voltage hub connected. So in essence, this rack allows you to stack the batteries, which I've been complaining about for a while. Now think about how much space you're gonna save on the floor. Instead of having six of these units on the ground, you can stack them with this rack. And if you buy a second rack, you could have a third and a fourth shelf. And that would allow you to use like 12 units in the space that you would only use three. So these shelves are fantastic for people with EcoFlow Delta Pros. Also think about how much solar you could connect to all of those and you could have two double voltage hubs. So the one on top could be for a well pump or a mini split air conditioner for your off-grid home. And then the bottom one could be for your main panel so you could run your laptop and your lights. And that would give you two systems which I do not recommend, but you could size the solar arrays accordingly for the loads, depending on what you need to power. Also with server rack batteries, if you're doing a DIY system, these racks, you can also flip these server rack batteries horizontally and stack them. The manufacturer actually said that that works just fine. So whether you use EcoFlow Delta Pros or if you're using server rack batteries, these racks are fantastic. They're just the perfect size for putting batteries inside. Now in this system is an uninterruptible power supply for my mini split, having one unit works great and the cable management is not that bad. And as you can see, we have two expansion cables for the batteries, a solar charge controller input, and then this AC cable actually charges the batteries from my main solar power system. But if you have more than one EcoFlow Delta Pro, I highly recommend buying this rack. And I promise you're gonna find other uses for this thing because it is so strong. It can handle like 4,500 pounds. And these are only 100 pounds each. So yeah, check it out if you're using more than one of these EcoFlow Delta Pros. Now the big question that people have is should you build a DIY system or simply buy an EcoFlow Delta Pro? If you have the money for the EcoFlow Delta Pro and you stack them, it is a good system and I really like it. But if you want an autonomous system that turns itself back on again or wakes itself up, the EcoFlow Delta Pro is not for you. So if you have a cabin in the middle of nowhere and you have a SIM card router and you need it to have power 24 seven, and if power shuts down, you need it to turn back on once it recharges, these will not work for your application. You will have to build a DIY solar power system. Those units can do everything that you want and it's very beginner friendly nowadays. It's only one box on on your wall and then connect it to one or two batteries if you need a small system. If you wanna build a big system, you buy a server rack and you can make it as big as you want. Next, if you need to charge an electric vehicle like a Tesla, the double voltage hub will not work to charge it. You will have to build your own DIY system. So anybody that has an electric vehicle, just go straight to that instead. Furthermore, going DIY is a lot cheaper than these EcoFlow Delta Pros. People that buy these want the most beginner friendly, easiest to set up units on the market and these only take a few minutes to set up but this only takes a couple hours even for a beginner to set up so yeah you can actually call this pretty beginner friendly now also I updated the blueprint for this system and I've been running it every single day um, I use my heat camera to see if there's any hot spots and it is running flawlessly I charge up my Tesla at a very fast rate every day with level 2 charging and yeah um, it's also powering the mini split in here and I keep it at 74 degrees in Las Vegas Vegas. So yeah, fantastic system. Also consider that those two EG4s can output 13,000 watts and you can connect 16,000 watts of solar to them and it's only $1,300 each. Okay, so for two of those, that's $2,600. And this is over $3,000. It does come with a battery, but the output is a fraction of that system. And the solar input is even less than that. It's only 3,000 something watts. 
So take that into consideration when you're pricing out your system. This does come with a battery, so you have to factor that in as well. And these are still a very good deal as a plug and play system. But if you need power, you're gonna have to do your own DIY system. Now that's pretty much all I can think about for this video. Um, these are very cool and I think as a mobile system around a property, if you need to power tools, these are fantastic. But for a standalone off-grid system, I would always go with those instead. The LV6548, the LV6048, the EG4s, um, all of these are fantastic and very beginner friendly. So I'll have a link for those below if you want to see that system and how to build it. Um, and yeah, and check out the link for these if you want these instead. So yeah, I will talk to you in the next video and thank you so much for watching. Bye.